Welcome to Health Matters, a podcast presented by Wellmark, Blue Cross, and Blue Shield, where we invite Wellmark experts to discuss healthcare and health insurance topics that matter most. I'm your host, Kareem Amiri. Well, hello, everyone. Uh, at Wellmark, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, our mission is to make healthcare better for our members, customers, and communities across Iowa and South Dakota. We have a responsibility to manage healthcare affordability for our members and customers. Today, I'm happy to have Ryan Nolte uh, from our pharmacy team join me to dive into the topic of GLP-1s. Um, this is a drug class that is talked about everywhere from the news, um, radio, social media, and any publication probably you can pick up. Um, so Ryan, thanks for joining me today. And uh, I know last year we, you know, we had a podcast about GLP-1s, but with the ever-changing landscape, wanted to, to talk about it again. Um, so before we we jump in. Can you tell everybody a little bit about your background and what you do at Walmart? Absolutely. So I'm Ryan Nolte. I'm a licensed pharmacist here with Walmart on the pharmacy team. And my role is a clinical account consultant. So I work in sales support and I help employers with the pharmacy side of their health plan, working to help ensure that uh, they understand all the programs that we have available, understand their pharmacy program and, and the costs associated with it, yep. and work to find any solutions that we can to help lower costs or, or provide better healthcare or better access to healthcare for their members. You know, so let's jump on to the topic of GLP-1s. Um, for those unfamiliar, you know, can you first define what GLP-1 is, even like what the letters stand for um, yeah. and, uh, you know, how the landscape for this drug class has evolved over time? GLP stands for glucagon-like peptide 1, and that's uh, what this drug is. is it's an agonist, so it, it mimics the naturally occurring hormone in your body, GLP, uh, which helps to stimulate insulin se insulin secretion in your body once uh, your body has higher levels of blood sugar. So after you eat, GLP helps to, to raise your insulin levels, which can be an issue for type 2 diabetics. Uh, this drug has been so effective for type 2 diabetes that it now is, is one of the few first-line agents for type 2 diabetes. Um, we, we've tried to provide it as, yeah. as clear access to it for type 2 diabetes as we can. but uh, It has become the front line. It's overtaken a lot of other drug classes as like in, as far as spend at, at Walmart. Exactly, yes. Yeah, it is one of the leading uh, drivers of, of cost, especially in, in traditional pharmacy, definitely. Uh, even, even looking, some of the drugs are projected to pass, surpass Humira, a specialty drug, in terms of all times gross income. Um, so extremely effective uh, class of medications, but it, they do come with a lot of side effects. And, and one of those primary side effects actually turned out to be more of a benefit for, for members, which is weight loss. Uh, yeah. And that's that's where I think GLP ones have, have really gained a lot of their notoriety is, is their effect on, on weight loss for, for members that are struggling with that. Um, that mechanism mechanism of action we're not as sure of uh, right. where it acts. We know that it does slow down the movement of food through through members' guts, um, which which can tend to, uh, which helps members with uh, eating less because they are full a lot quicker. Um, but but beyond that, we're not we're not exactly sure where it acts in the body that that leads to that weight loss. Yeah, you know, you mentioned side effects, obviously weight loss being the, the big one, but there's others and, you know, people that make people stop. Can you talk a little bit about that as well? And like what we've seen, how many people actually drop the medication or stop the medication. Right. There, there's a lot of discontinuation with, with GLP-1s. They, they tend to cause a lot of issues with uh, members' GIs, so so their gastrointestinal uh, system. So a lot of nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, things like that um, are, are probably the most common side effects that, that lead to discontinuation. And I'd say there's a wide variety in terms of uh, what the numbers are on, on discontinuation, and it also, of course, depends drug to drug. But usually we like to, to rest on that between 15 and 20 percent we expect to, to discontinue the medication within uh, the first few months. So this is probably a, a good time to um, you know remind our listeners what exactly is Walmart's stance on GLP-1s. So for our fully insured book of business, we do not cover uh, weight loss medications, including GLP-1s. And uh, the reason for that is, is we're waiting on more long-term data that shows that there is sustained clinical benefit with these medications, uh, as well as that the results coming from these medications and, and the cost of them is offset by the medical costs further on down the road uh, with the positive benefits that, that come from the weight loss. And right now, we just don't have enough long-term data to, to see that cost offset long-term. 
Um, how about for our self-funded groups? I, what's our recommendation there? We recommend against covering these medications for the same reasons why we don't cover them with our fully insured book of business. Of course, if a self-funded group does want to cover them, uh, we'll fully support that. Uh, we do recommend that if they are to cover them, that they cover them with a prior authorization. And that just helps to ensure that uh, we're, we're able to assess members based on their BMI, exercise regimens, and, and uh, as well as the safety parameters of the medication, just to ensure that uh, they do qualify for that. Yeah, and just a reminder, what are the parameters for the PA? Yeah, absolutely. So for weight loss indication, the the PA is, is either a BMI of 27 with one comorbid condition, so something like um, blood pressure, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, things like that, or BMI of 30. And then we also do uh, re require that a member is able, or the provider is able to attest that the member's been a part of a, a weight loss program that includes both diet and exercise uh, habit forming. Yeah, I, I mean, I think the point of that is probably would still get a lot of people that would qualify even with the PA. Absolutely. So something yeah. to think about there. Um, you know, in the news, I think it just came out recently, there's been new indications has any of those new indicators for the medication changed our stance or what are our thoughts on that? Right now, none of the new indications have changed our stance on these medications. I know um, the the most popular one that, that I'm sure you're referring to is Wigovi that recently is, is now approved to reduce cardiovascular risk in adults with obesity or overweight uh, and heart disease. Um, and, and that went through our P&T committee uh, very recently, which is made up of our own in-house clinical pharmacy team, as well as uh, providers and pharma practicing providers and pharmacists around Iowa and South Dakota. Uh, and the decision was made to to only still cover Wigovi for groups that cover weight loss, so it's not covered for our fully insured group. Um, and, and that just that just came based on the clinical study that led to uh, the FDA decision to approve Wagovi for this indication, the study was not very generalizable and, and there was a little bit of lacking in terms of strong clinical data that, that shows uh, positive effects that'll lead to, again, an, an offset in, in costs down the road. Yeah, so with all these things out there, the new indications um, and the demand, I know our customers, and you've been in meetings uh, with me as well, um, you know, they're really looking for guidance. You know, what are other options that they have? What what else could we, you know, as an employer, what can we do um, to support our members because of this demand? There have been a lot of weight loss programs that have become available with GLPs being so expensive and it really isn't a very common uh, drug to cover for weight loss. So there are a lot of employers that are looking for these solutions, they're they're yeah. definitely not alone. Uh, and one solution that we offer is Wonder Health. And so what Wonder Health is, is it's, it's not exactly a fast fix dieting program or anything like that, but rather it's more of a mindful eating lifestyle program developed to help members lose weight and, and sustain that weight loss long term. Uh, I know that there's a lot of other programs and products like this out in the market. and. Uh, one of the more new developments with them is actually that they are offering a GLP-1 component to them. Now, we, we haven't added this on uh, to our Wonder Health uh, vendor yet, but we know that they're coming out with and other programs are making it available. And that'll be interesting to see. And I think uh, another piece of that really will be if there's any programs out there that, that can help members lose weight through the GLP-1, but then also eventually lead to deprescribing it. Uh, I think that'll be where the main focus is on these programs, especially if, if we do choose to, to add on the GLP-1 portion. Yeah, that's the silver bullet right there, right? Yeah. I mean, and it just haven't had enough time to, to get there to prove that they actually can do that yet. Exactly. Yeah. But I, I am uh, I'm excited that we have that coming along and the, and the work we're doing there. And hopefully we'll have more to talk with employers here in the near future about it. Um, you know, but, it, you know, along those lines, I have asked uh, a registered dietitian, Julie Anga, um, to join me in an upcoming episode um, to really dive into some of those solutions. So if you're listening, um, hopefully we'll have some more information there. Uh, but fortunately, our, our time's up for today, unless there's anything else you want to add, Ryan? No, I think that covers it. Awesome. Um, if you, for those listening, if you have any additional questions, um, please reach out to your Wellmark account manager and uh, have a great day. Thanks.
So if you want to continue the conversation about today's topic, please reach out to your Wellmark representative. And thank you for tuning in to Health Matters, a podcast presented by Wellmark, Blue Cross, and Blue Shield. Take care.